I'm Kristen Capps. I'm here today to introduce Ford Petros. Ford is uh, a longtime uh, librarian at the Library of Congress. He has been there for 37 years. For the last four years, he has served as the director for the Center of Architecture, Design, and Engineering. He's going to talk to you today about his work over the last uh, over the last few decades and the things that he has brought into the collection at the Library of Congress. Ford. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, yes, I've been there for quite a while, uh, but one of my uh, jobs, or I should say privileges, is to collect American architecture for the Library of Congress. And so this morning I brought you sort of a son et lumiere, a quick trip through um, uh, high points of what we have collected and why we collect to document what is special or unusual or characteristic about American architecture. Um, and um, if we could have the, uh, i go for my first image here. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's a title which I was asked to talk about, Collecting America's Architectural History at the Library of Congress. And I'm pushing the green button. <laughs> Capitals. <laughs> um, some of you may find this of interest, but I mean, what is more particular to the United States of America than the capital? The U.S. Capitol, our federal capital, and all the state capitals, many of which are modeled on it. It's where our system of government takes place. I'm also going to show you courthouses a little while later and county courthouses, uh, which also uh, have to do with that. Um, and it's, uh, this is the very first drawing I acquired for the Library of Congress in 1976. And it's one of the drawings for, by one of the competitors for the Capitol, Stephen Hallett. And it's his final scheme. And one of my favorite things about it is it shows the room that never got built. The principal room that was called for in the uh, competition was the conference room. That's where both houses would meet together to work out their differences. Think how different our government might have been if that room had gotten built. Uh, architecture does matter. Now, 35 years later, I was able, uh, uh, through the generosity of the American Institute of Architects and the American Architectural Foundation, uh, we got these drawings uh, that are one year earlier than the one you just saw. They're by William Thornton, and they are the, his competition drawings that he first sent in for the U.S. Capitol from the island of Tortola. We already had two of these at the Library of Congress. The other two were at the AIAAAF collection, and now the whole family is back together again. Uh, but how different it is from the Hallett scheme, how different it is from what was built, it looks like an English country house with, with just a cupola on top. That's about the only thing that makes it look very much like a capital. Now, another source for the Library of Congress, one of our richest sources, has been copyright deposit. And this is a kind of image from 1862 showing the ongoing construction of the Capitol during the Civil War and this magnificent church in the foreground by James Renwick, which is now gone. Uh, but we only had the original glass plate negative. We didn't have a print for this, and we only were able to acquire the print by purchase just in the last 12 months. Uh, but it's one of the great images of Washington, D.C. and of American architecture. Now, many of you may have heard of the Historic American Building Survey, the Historic American Engineering Record, and the Historic American Landscape Survey. These are all public domain collections created by the National Park Service in cooperation with the Library of Congress, and in the case of the Historic American Building Survey, or HABS, in cooperation with the American Institute of Architects. HABS has been going since 1933. It's the only Depression-era make-work project that still continues in some form. And there are over 300,000 HABS hair Hals documents online at high resolution available from the Library of Congress's website 24-7. It's one of the most used collections in the library. And it has measured drawings like this magnificent cross-section of the dome of the Texas State Capitol that you see, um, and, and then one of the photographs of it. There will also be a historical report that goes with that. But again, there are over 300,000 of these documents in the public domain, freely usable by anyone, especially students and teachers. It's made us a major player in the K through 12 world. A, uh, so it has a yet another life. 
Now, to supplement these things, we collect private archives, like the archives of architectural photographers. One of these is the Gacho Slice Archive. In the 70s. Uh, here you see this absolutely stellar view of 1932 of Times Square at night. That's the then new Paramount building, the to tower with the lighted clock you see there. Uh, this is a collection uh, of over 40,000 images, uh, over 29,000 large format negatives that document aspects of American architecture uh, that aren't necessarily available in our other collections. Another Gacho Sleissner image is this uh, color image from the very beginnings of Kodachrome um, uh, of the Westinghouse building at the New York World's Fair of 1939-40, this Tower of Light. Um, uh, and of course, Gacho was one of the few people to capture it in color and thus preserve. So you can see it's an early OM building. You may and uh, it uh, in for a, a by Joseph E. Seagram and four of the best photographers in the country to document 1,100 county courthouses and then gave this collection to the Library of Congress. Here you see a Robert Mills Greek Revival Courthouse in South Carolina. Here you see the Philadelphia uh, City and County Municipal Building, this great Second Empire building, one of the largest uh, uh, public buildings ever built in America. Uh, from the 1870s. It wasn't finished until 1901. And here you see the inside of the Grady County Courthouse in Cairo, Georgia, showing those 12 seats of the jury, 12, uh, the 12 jurors that the Constitution uh, in ensures for fairness. Um, the most recent acquisition of a large architectural archive is that of Balthasar Korab, one of the three greatest photographers of mid-century American architecture. Over 500,000 images in public domain, free, uh, for free use. We still need friends to help us digitize them and put them online. But here you see Coast to Coast, the Salk Institute in California. Uh, on the uh, one side, and then Frank Lloyd Wright uh, by Lou Kahn, and Frank Lloyd Wright's Best Shalom Synagogue at night uh, uh, just outside of Philadelphia. More Korabs, uh, you see the uh, Mies van der Rohe's Federal Center in Chicago, uh, you see the World Trade Towers before they went down, and you see uh, in the middle the wonderful Carl Millis Fountain at the Cranbrook Institute. Bridges, and mostly I didn't talk about engineering and design because this is an architecture day, uh, but uh, in 1981, David Plowden gave us this marvelous series of photographs of industrial America and bridges in this great Art Deco bridge um, uh, in, or or in uh, Oregon by Condi McCullough. Tall buildings are one of the great things in American architecture, and here is Cass Gilbert's original sketch um, for the Woolworth Building in New York, written on a little restaurant menu um, in 1910. Uh, this tiny little sketch, which was given by Gilbert's family, and on the right, uh, an image that came to us later by purchase at auction, showing Frank Woolworth sitting in his baronial office in the Woolworth Building with a note from his secretary that Mr. Uh, Gilbert kept this drawing on his desk for 25 years. Paul Rudolph, uh, another great modernist architecture, a hundred, uh, one of his early projects for the Pacific Rim, Singapore, 1981, Mag changed the way architectural drawings were done so that they would reproduce well in, in publications of the late 40s, early 50s. Um, 100,000 drawings in the Rudolph archive, probably. Libraries. Most recently from the American Institute of Architects and the American Architectural Foundation came uh, a huge collection, including the whole archive of Richard Morris Hunt, the first American to graduate from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts. And here's the magnificent rendering for his Linux library in New York, torn down later to build the Frick. Uh, the monument to Richard Morris Hunt is still across the street from it, however. Performing arts. This is a drawing that I found in a little shop in New York, unidentified other than it was by the great renderer Hugh Ferris. 
I later figured out it's a very little known project by Eero Saarinen and Wallace K. Harrison for an opera house in LA in the late 40s, but it informs their later work at both the United Nations and at Lincoln Center in New York, and it's just a glorious rendering, and of course also shows the influence of Oscar Niemeyer. Memorials are a major part of American architecture. Uh, I just pick a couple today. Here are drawings we get, got at auction uh, uh, showing the initial schemes for the Lincoln Memorial. And you see how much smaller and more modest the statue of Lincoln was going to be at one point. And these came from uh, Francis Bacon, uh, the uh, brother of the architect. Here, of course, are the drawings by the winning drawing by Maya Lin for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial from 81, and Steve Ohl's renderings on the right to show people what it would look like who couldn't quite understand what uh, uh, Maya Lin uh, had wanted to do. Places of worship. Um, here you have the famous church at Rancho de Taos uh, in, uh, uh, in New Mexico. This was a gift. And finally, I'll close with this image of an interior perspective and elevations of churches by Richard Upjohn, another one of the founders of the American Institute of Architects, who was trained as a carpenter and when he came to the United States with our great forest and the, our most plentiful construction material is wood, with his board and batten exteriors and these great wooden interiors, he brought a whole new vocabulary of design to American architecture. So that's the sort of thing we collect, that's why we collect it, there's lots more, please come to our website and enjoy. Thank you.